suppose we can do the thing we do where we start the show and we didn't even know it yet. <laughs> I don't know if people want to hear all that planning bullshit just then. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like cutting room floor stuff. Yeah, yeah. We can just say... Welcome to the show. <laughs> Welcome to the show. And this is going to be starting out... I'm sure they'll eventually pop up in the regular psychosemantic feed. But this is the Doom of Legion, or the Legion of Doom, or something with a cooler title. Don't know. But initially, this is recorded as a the psychosemantic Legion Patreon offering. I am Darren, always with psychosemantic, and Mark who is on the last episode as of the recording of this. Mark, welcome to this weird experiment. Hello, yeah, this is the first, uh, well, I guess it's not really the first non-horror-related show that I've ever done, but, uh, like, your your show, we've talked about plenty of stuff that's definitely not horror, but, uh, yeah, anyway, this is, this is a stepping a little bit out of our comfort zone, I would say, and uh, we're going to be talking about comic books and comic book movies and... Uh, a few things in between, I'm sure, as we as we like to do. But uh, yeah, this is this this should be cool. This should be interesting. Uh, yeah, tonight we're did we did we say what the movie is that we're talking about yet? We're talking about Captain America: The First Avenger. 2011, ten years ago. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> right. I, I think originally we, the reason we're starting with this one is because originally we were just going to go through the. Mo- Marvel movies in uh, so, so we, we talked a lot about what order to do them in and uh, we, we eventually settled on what is current chronological order I'm sure some more movies will come out here before too long that technically I forget when Shang-Chi takes place I feel like that doesn't take place in the present day but I could be wrong uh, <laughs> that might that might fuck that chronological order up a little bit but uh, we, we also decided at some point to include uh, non-Marvel movies in this series, like well, we'll be talking about like this is some of this, some of the DC stuff, even though there's a lot of it I really don't care for. Uh, and we'll, we'll also have to throw in like you know the Crow and uh, you know there, there's a zillion comic book movies that we could throw in the mix, but we are gonna do the Marvel movies in pretty close to chronological order, right? That is the plan. We'll do them in in one of the accepted. Uh, orders. There's chronological <laughs> order in release in our world in this timeline, <laughs> and then right. there's chronological within the MCU, and whatever f- fuck ups we have, uh, we'll retcon it, and it'll be okay. Cause <laughs> yep. You could do that with all the comic stuff, like they did with to explain away uh, why Captain America was doing stuff while. Steve Rogers was frozen in ice, which happens at the end of this movie and in the regular timeline of the comic book. Right. It's also confusing. <laughs> We're definitely going to have to at some point bring bring in some like real for real deal experts on like uh, a few of these characters. I, I don't know. Totally. Uh, we, we accept all corrections. Just don't be a dick about it. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, I will fully admit that there are a lot of comic book characters that I'm not super duper familiar with. There are a few that I'm pretty familiar with, but uh, yeah, we, we should probably get that out of the way, like, here at the front. Please, please don't yell at us if we get shit wrong. <laughs> yeah. I just, like, I got a lot going on, you know, and I just <laughs> want to fucking deal with it. We're, we're kind of just doing this for funsies, you know. I, I You can be a big fan of something without being a fucking expert knowing every last little detail about it like that's that's totally a thing uh so hopefully yeah this is like a nice in-between show for people that are like either casually into comic books or comic book movies and people that are fucking mega nerds about this stuff uh i'd I'd say i fall somewhere around in the middle yeah with comic books i think i've mentioned pretty regularly whenever the topic comes up and, you know, we do the, the boys on VD Clinic and Psychosemantic because we started out on both. So we're going to run that series all the way through on both on both timelines, on both right. feeds. But, yeah, I, I'm more into the weirder comics, the shorter runs. 
I've probably read more of the Marvel Zombies stuff than regular Marvel. I think I've said before, for a long time, uh, my band that got talked about in the Hardcore Logo episode a lot, our practice space was at a comic book shop. Ah. So we'd get... Uh, and it was cool. Uh, in the f- second... Or the first, it's hard to keep track. They moved a couple times. But at one of the locations, they had the next door store in the strip also. And they put on all ages shows all the time, which was really cool. That's that's how we got uh, hooked up with them. So we started playing there cool. all the time and got friends with all the people that worked there and the guy that owned it. And they actually put the band in one of the comic books that they put out. So I'm in a comic book fighting zombies. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. And Keith, the guy that ran the place, would just randomly say, hey, I think you'd like this. So that's how I got into The Walking Dead and Why the Last Man and stuff like that. And then more, a lot of graphic novels and stuff. Uh, I talked about I took some classes in college. Ohio State has a pretty big cartoon library and museum. And a lot of uh, people getting their PhDs that need to teach classes. So I got cool classes like Difficult History Through Comics, where we read My Friend Dahmer and Mouse and Pride of Baghdad. Oh, that sounds and stuff like a like way that. cool class. Yeah, and it, it was like a four or five hundred level English credit. <laughs> and just, Damn. So it's, it's, it's very spotty and weird and fun, and there's it's such a big world. Of stuff that I, yeah, I right off the bat, this is sort of a blind spot. I've seen the movies a lot, but the comics and the lore around the comics, it's patchy. What, Captain America first came out in 1940? So, yeah, yeah. did not soak up 80, am I doing the math wrong? Am I sounding really stupid right now saying 80 years? Uh, Almost 80 years. I did look into some of the stuff about Captain America, uh, the comic and the, the origin, and then we can talk about the movie and we'll just psycho semantic all over the place. But wow. I wanted to say thank you for trying this out with me. And I hope this is something yeah. that somebody in the Patreon enjoys or whatever. This, this show might like, I, I mean, I don't know. It might have been the, the feedback that you got that you showed me on the uh, hardcore logo show, but it kind of boosted my ego a little bit. Now I'm like, I bet quite a few people probably enjoy hearing us two goofuses talk about comic book movies. So, yeah, yeah, dude, I was fucking pumped when you mentioned that you wanted to do this because this is not stuff I generally get to talk about on podcasts basically ever. So, yeah, I'm excited. Sweet. Yeah, I, I'm stoked. It's something that I've batted around and to uh, each according to their ability or from each according to their ability to each according to their need trying to do something for the Patreon. And yeah, like I said, it'll end up in the regular feed somewhere down the line. That's cool. (laughs) If you are listening to this on the Patreon feed, we massively enjoy er, and enjoy and appreciate uh, you guys supporting all of the podcasts are are on there. It's, it's a, it's a little network, but it also is home to a fuckload of my friends. So yeah, if you are listening to this on the Patreon feed, thank you very much. Like we said, Captain America was first published in 1940. I really hope I didn't get that bit wrong. But I think I actually have it written <laughs> down in my scattered note. But anyway. I don't, I don't take notes on, uh, on a podcast. I, I commend you for doing it, but I haven't taken notes in fucking years. I, think I actually found the notebook from the Midnight Horror Show days that had when we used to do the fucking... Uh, like the games, I can't even remember the names of them now and I don't have it right next to me, but, uh, yeah, that was the last time that I kept notes for a fucking podcast. So, uh, please excuse my ignorance. Well, my notes have gotten, uh, scanter and scanter, if that's the Uh, proper word. They used to be very elaborate. Now it's just random words. Captain America, 1940. Uh, obviously, uh, Jack Kirby, who was born Jacob Kurtzberg and grew up in the Lower East Side of New York. The lore varies, and maybe we can get someone to correct us on this at some point. But I saw that when he was younger, 
uh, Jacob, who well, I, I'm just going to call him Jack Kirby because that's the name he picked. Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby. Uh, saw a, like a pulp magazine type thing in the gutter, and it it was either an H.P. Lovecraft story or something else, but it made him decide that he wanted to, and this is from an article about him, and I read a cha- a couple chapters in a book about the history of Marvel. So right. th- these are from people saying they know what they're talking about. <laughs> so we're going to trust that. <laughs> right. We don't uh, have much choice. He decided when he was in, a kid that he wanted to be a comic book artist. And also in this time, comic books was one of the jobs that Jewish artists could get with less issue from the, you know, large portion of anti-Semitic people in power in America and elsewhere. Right. So in the late 30s, Kirby was working for... I should have written it down as Flesher or Fleischer Studios doing like Popeye and Betty Boop shit. And he was bored out of his mind. He felt like he was just doing another version of the shitty factory job his dad worked right. to, to raise him. So he hooked up with a guy called Joe Simon, who was at, I don't think it's the re- same company, but it was uh, Fox Publishing or Fox Publications. Right. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I don't think that has anything to do with 20th Century Fox, but maybe somebody, again, somebody correct me if I'm wrong here. He hired him to work on a comic. Uh, I think the first comic that Simon hired Kirby to do was called Blue Bolt. And that in the creation of that that is when he finally settled on the jack kirby pseudonym i think he had okay. published blue bolt under a couple different names another main person in the creation of captain america was a guy called martin or marty goodman he was just kind of a let's publish whatever sells whatever's popular but uh, at least the nice. book said that he was always a little bit behind the times. Oh, no, that's not good. But uh, he was the founder of a publishing company that changed its name a lot before it eventually became Marvel. OK. They had, I believe, a uh, it was called the Submariner was a character that was kind of. Both he's sides. vaguely like Aquaman. He's he's like the Marvel equivalent, kind of. Okay. Goodman hired Simon, and Simon said, I need to bring Kirby with me. And really early on, they came up with Captain America, whose original name was the Super American. <laughs> okay. And because they were trying to go with superhero type stuff you know a little bit uh, okay secret identities. superman was well established at this point i think i think superman goes back another 20 30 years before that so that that makes sense that was where they were going and that's where they had the basic idea for a shield and it had stripes on it and everything and of course in the first issue on the cover Got Captain America punching the fuck out of Hitler. Oh, what a way to what a way to start. Uh, it, which is weird because like when you really think about like what Captain America looks like, like all I can imagine is like five dudes in suits smoking cigars in a boardroom and they're like, well, let's turn an American flag into a superhero. And that was that was it. I mean that that's that, that's this whole thing. He's if you like <laughs> if you barf the Star Spangled Banner all over a dude in a spandex suit. That's <laughs> that's Captain America. And that's kind of like I mean I imagine again, admittedly I haven't read a lot of the old Captain America comics, but I would imagine a lot of them are like nauseatingly patriotic at the at the beginning of it because that's a fucking easy sell there has almost never been a time in america's history where fake fake patriotism doesn't sell 
So yeah, this is I yeah, again. It's just like we're we're gonna appeal to all of like America. Like what America needs its own superhero kind of like I I, I can just imagine the boardroom meeting between these dudes as far as that goes. I mean, I'm being incredibly cynical about it. And like obviously, uh, Captain America is the rare Marvel character that gets to go kind of back on that later in the lore and later in the movies, especially where uh, it's like, oh, these are movies that are highly fucking critical of America and it kind of turns on its head a little bit, but uh, yeah, old school Captain America is great. I love his bell bottom boots and the old drawings for sure. <laughs> oh, and uh, Kirby, Simon and Goodman were all poor starving artists, Jewish starving artists. This was a year or two before America was even to enter world war two. Oh, okay. America was still. I'm staying out of it. The you know the isolationists. This is around the time that the Nazi Party had that big party at Madison Square Garden. That might have been thirty eight or thirty nine, but okay. they had a big Nazi rally at Madison Square Garden, and it's sort of like today, Nazis just kind of walked around saying, "Yeah, I'm a Nazi." <laughs> Yeah, they they could have a parade at Madison Square Garden without, you know, I I would like to think that nowadays, like even in a fucking uppity up rich neighborhood like that, they would probably start a riot if just had a big ass Nazi parade. Yeah, I guess in some cases it is. uh, It's less fashionable these days, but it was relatively fine. I mean, what Charles Lindbergh was pretty sympathetic to the Nazi or at least the American nationalist cause. Yeah, and he was a national I'm pretty sure hero, I've heard that. presidents, all this stuff. But and whoever owned Square Garden was fine with having a Nazi rally there. And uh, yeah. uh, Jack Kirby was pretty political himself. I found that out, and I was kind of happy because a lot of comic book artists are like, "No, I'm not," or you find out that they're a piece of shit. But Jack Kirby was like, they would get death threats and shit when they started uh, publishing. Captain America fighting Nazis because there's the uh, German American Bunt or Bunt. I, 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 it's probably Bunt, uh, which was the movement of uh, Nazism in America, and that's although some of those people went over to fight for Germany and in, in the war and stuff. Right. But yeah, people would call, right. call the office and be like, "I bet you wouldn't come downstairs. If you come downstairs, I'll beat the." shit out of you and jack kirby would be the one that said okay i'll be right down and all right see this is changing my mind about my preconceived notions about what old captain america is like now i'm thinking like oh maybe this is like a fucking fuck nazis kind of statement like through and through i mean jack kirby himself definitely hated nazis and he was fine to say it and he he would uh i mean i pretty sure he fought in world war ii if i'm not mistaken i think he actually went on yeah but i think jack kirby actually killed nazis at some point in his life (laughs) all right well yeah i've kind of forgotten about that Uh, like uh, real quick to kind of jump forward to the movie i I, the one thing that like uh, from this rewatch because i've seen the movie we're talking about like about two or three times now uh it got me thinking about like why why exactly nazi symbolism and like actual using and using nazis as actual characters became like such a fucking awful thing that like i mean hydra is basically kind of like our nazi placeholders in this movie like i i don't know i i I get why they did it i guess but like i i could definitely tell on this go around like i was i was a lot more conscious of it i guess i was like hmm like (laughs) these are nazis god damn it just like star wars is stormtroopers well i guess they start out as nazis because red skull was appointed by Hitler to run their their occult section or whatever the fuck it's called. And right. So, and then he, but he does splinter off and, you know, this will change the world. And, and like they mentioned, they mentioned Nazis like a zillion times in this movie, but there's nary a swastika, no, no fucking sig heiling. I mean, not really. They have like the Hydra version of that in this movie. Uh, no, no, no goose stepping, uh, none of that fucking bullshit. Like, as 
like, I don't know, I guess because it's Marvel. Well, I was going to say this is the mouse, but the mouse actually didn't put this movie out. Paramount did. Uh, right. This was before Marvel Studios got scooped up by the mouse. So, yeah, these, these first couple... Uh, like this in the first and second, I think, Iron Man movie. And I think Thor had maybe already come out at this point. But I think this was like one of the last ones before the first Avengers movie. So, uh, yeah, this, this, this wasn't the mouse. So, I mean, you can't use that excuse as to why. And I'm, to be clear, I'm not like demanding that there should be swastikas in this movie. I would have really, me, you know, we get the... Uh, <laughs> the the play act version basically of that first cover of Captain America punching fucking Hitler I do believe but that's about the extent of it other than a few mentions about Nazis wanting to kill them uh, so I don't know I, I just thought that was weird I think there is a scene where someone picks up the comic book that is that cover after Captain America yeah. starts getting popular but yep, the, that's right. the play acting of it was well, Who's got the band? Da, 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 da. Uh, each bond you buy is a bullet in your best guy's gun. Uh, when when he is a propaganda machine in the movie. Well, 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 going back to symbols, though, before we get into more of the plot. I do kind of wish that the Hydra symbol was more of a Hydra instead of an octopus. That is a perfectly fair point. And I think like what I was thinking about just now, I think I realized why there's no uh, like a lot of, you know, Nazi Nazi shit. And it's a little bit more so. It's so that this movie could be played in Germany because I think they tend to have pretty uh, <laughs> they're not proud of that history and well deserved. But uh, yeah, lots of like, like all the Ilsa movies and shit like that are mega mega banned in Germany because yeah obviously anything with like a swastika and Nazis it, it's kind of a sore spot for them so I I, I guess that kind of makes sense <laughs> I don't know. Well, they did pass a bunch of laws after World War II uh, criminalizing a lot of uses of the symbols so I bet there's a lot of red tape to jump through yeah. in films but I bet Inglorious Bastards played over there I I have no idea. It'd be interesting to look up that kind of because I mean Germany is not like particularly a humongous film market. It's not like when you piss off all of China and that just like maybe gonna bankrupt your fucking studio. But uh, I I could see that or just like in the name of taste or whatever you know, so you can fucking. Not offend, not offend a bunch of people. Like these are ostensibly, like I know a lot of the comic books get like a little little darker or whatever. But these movies are, you know, especially since the mouse took over. This this is family fair, so they got to play some stuff kind of safe. So I totally get that. And let's see, two thousand eleven. When did uh, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull came out? Cause maybe they only put out one movie with the hero fighting Nazis in one year. Um, I will look it up really quick, but I feel like it was a little bit before this, and that was another comparison that I kind of thought about watching. This was like, you know, Captain America is, at least in this film, like kind of uh, like, you know, one star spangled banner jumpsuit away from being Indiana Jones. He's a bullwhip and a, a cool hat away from being Indiana Jones, which is no, in no way or shape or form a slight against him. I think that's cool as fuck. We need more movies with people punching Nazis. 2008 was when The Crystal Skull came out. Was so that that's... also Paramount? Or Universal? I, I'm about 90% sure that's Paramount. Where is that Wikipedia page? <laughs> Here it is. Uh, the street. Yep, Paramount Pictures, May 18th, 2008. Could have been that. I mean, Red Skull is uh, a splinter off independently operating from the Nazis. They mentioned he hung out with Himmler. Him and Himmler were buds, apparently. That's He goes all the way to the top. And I mean, Hugo Weaving as Red Skull in this movie, I think he made it less cartoonish than it could have been. I think it was perfectly cartoonish. I think it's... 
<laughs> I think it's pitched perfectly cartoony. It's still a little bit ridiculous. He's obviously not a German fellow. I think he's like uh, either Australian or New Zealand, possibly. Uh, but he's like fantastic with a lot of different kinds of accents. But yeah, his uh, his, his his German is actually not bad. Like I, I think, yeah, to a, a lesser actor, the role had gone. That this could have been a fucking nightmare. Which is also kind of interesting because this is the only time that he plays Red Skull in these movies. Another gentleman plays him when he pops up in... Is that Endgame or Infinity War? I think it's... Ooh. it's oh, it's Endgame it because... Endgame? Yeah, it's Endgame because that's when Black Widow and Hawkeye meet up with him and they're like, yo, what's the deal with this cliff? Sure would be a shame if somebody jumped off of it. Uh... <laughs> I, for but, some anyway, reason, I anyway. remember this because I looked it up when I was thought I was going to do Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Hugo Weaving was born in Nigeria to okay. British parents, but he's lived in Australia pretty much his whole life. All right. I was partially right, at least. But, uh, yeah, his, his German is not bad. Hugo Weaving's fucking fantastic in, like, basically everything he does. Even when he's in a not-so-great movie, he is... Uh, like what I consider very strong casting, and he definitely plays bad guys really well. I think he's 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 super hamming it up in this movie, which I, I think is perfectly fine because he's a fairly ridiculous fucking character. He's literally just a fucking Nazi th- with a big red fucking face and head. <laughs> it's, it's it's goofy as hell. He looks pretty rad in the comics because yeah, it, lo- it looks more like a skull, but in this. Like, to be perfectly honest, he looks, I think he looks a little goofy, but that's just like the the live action interpretation, like, of the character. They didn't, they didn't want to do a dude with an actual red skull for a fucking head, and I can kind of understand why, but uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That was a really long tangent away from your, your history of uh, Captain America that you're going through there. Did you have any other, like, cool like information about him as a character kind of i feel like that was five tangents ago it's all good and then we can get into the cast um the one other thing that i did see was that at the end of the first issue talking about your ultra patriotism and captain america is an idea of patriotism captain america is what america should be or thinks it is yeah, and he has his own. He, he later on in the series, he shows dedication to his people, but not necessarily his government, which is a form of patriotism. But at the end of the first Captain America, it said, "Join Captain America's Sentinels of Liberty in the war against the spies and enemies in our midst to threaten our very independence." And it was like. You know, hey kids, if you see any Nazis, you know, turn them in. Right. And they actually got lots and lots of tips of suspected Nazi activity and shit. Which well, was interesting, that's but cool. also a little bit of a little bit of surveillance state. A yeah. Little, little bit of patriotism. I. I I I, I, want, I would want my son to tell me if he saw a bunch of Nazis, but that's just me. I, but it also I'm makes me guy. like it also makes me think like fast forward a little bit in history and if like the same exact shit would have been going on during the Red Scare and people are anonymously narking each other out as communists. I mean, obviously, I'm not comparing, you know, <laughs> communist communism to Nazism. But yeah, it's it's kind of the same thing like you were saying with the surveillance state. Like I, I, I would hope that wouldn't be a system that would be abused. And funny you should bring up the Cold War. From what I understood, or what I think I understood, one of the side versions or someone else being Captain America while Captain America was frozen in the ice because he froze before the war ended. But they had people pretending to be him. There was a failed series of Captain America where somebody was pretending to be Captain America, but it was to fight against communists. But 
they didn't do I think they just injected the soldier serum and not the pim particles or whatever other magic thing that they use to right. Captain America Captain America so uh, it seemed like they sort of lost their mind and started thinking everyone was a communist yeah because they fucked up sort of like how they got Red Skull, where it was a failed version of the super soldier. And I think that was right. also another person pretending to be Bucky, who was like his Robin in some of the comics, instead of yeah. uh, his Se- Sebastian Stan, best bud as he is. <laughs> his uh, BFF. Yeah, taking all the stupid with you. Uh, so getting into the cast, uh, which in that sort of fumbling segue back into where we were, <laughs> that'll work. I mean, Sebastian Stan as Bucky, Chris Evans is who I think of when I think of Captain America. Yeah. And uh, Hugo Weaving, of course, big crush on Haley Atwell, Captain Carter. Yeah, and Megan General Tommy Lee Jones. Megan was yelling at me earlier because I had no idea who the actress was that plays Peggy Carter. I'm like, I know she's gorgeous in these movies, but I don't know her from fucking anything else as far as I know. I don't really think I've seen her in anything besides Captain America type stuff. I guess I've Uh, I saw that she was in Black Mirror. But I haven't seen all of Black Mirror, so I don't know if I saw her in that. Uh, I don't watch the Mission Impossible movies that she's apparently in. Nope. Um, a lot of TV, Mansfield Park, a whole lot of stuff I haven't seen besides <laughs> Captain America well, Avengers stuff. Yeah, I'll, so, I'll have to remember that and be like, you can't yell at me. I haven't seen any of this shit. I mean, she is a very accomplished 39 year old British actress that said, uh, yeah, it's a lot of big movies. But anyway, Stanley Tucci, of course, as the the bad scientist. So he's many, great I, in this. Yeah. I wouldn't even call him a bad scientist like at all. He's he's like the dad of this movie. He, like, he really takes Chris Evans under his wing and is like, you've got no good heart. Let's fucking shoot you up with serum and electrocute you like enough that it's going to cause blackouts in the city and turn you into a like, buff Chris Evans. Stay a good man. Give me your schnapps. Well, um, yeah, I mean, there's just I, of course, everybody was like, yeah, I'll be in the Captain America movie. We got Nick Fury as, or Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury. Yep. Uh, Pretty briefly, but he is in it. He is in it, and he will be talked about much more later. I couldn't help but notice this time around Natalie Dormer as the soldier lady that wants to thank Captain for saving one of those women's <laughs> husbands. Oh, she's fucking gorgeous, also. Yeah. Game of Thrones really okay really made her you you haven't watched all that have you no i have not another thing i'm gonna get yelled at about later she (laughs) she that's what i recognize her from she's like she's a she's like a princess queen uh that is in a lot of the show and okay integral to the plot uh for quite some time uh, of course, in this, there's... in this movie, not so much. <laughs> She's yeah. in like one scene, unfortunately. But she, yep, she shows up to. She, she seizes her moment, and gets Captain in trouble. Yep. But like the smart lady she is, uh, Captain Carter got mad at him and not at her. And this love story. Uh, trying not to talk about stuff that's later on in the movie series. They they plant so many seeds that get paid off 10 yep. years later. And I know that's a thing you can, we were talking about retconning and everything, but I think that that was a plan. I, I really, you have to think that 
there aren't that many coincidences in this. And when we do some of the DC stuff, we'll see how some universes are planned out well. Some are scattershot. Yeah. No, you're, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I don't know if it's like so much that there was a big plan like ahead of time or if they're just really fucking good at going back and like nitpicking things and being like, that's a thing we can extrapolate all this other shit off of. Uh, I think it might be a little mix of a, bo- a mix of both because I know damn well a lot of the comics were not there was not like a big fifty year plan for these characters' story arcs and like good chunk of the time I'm pretty sure they were waiting in it so uh, but yeah yeah you know it, it it has everything has endless sequel you know potential behind it and uh, it's it's kind of fucking genius and you know like you said a lot of a lot, a lot of other people have tried doing the same exact thing. I mean, we've gotten like how many years like now of movies just trying to do exactly what the Marvel universe is doing, and they if like the the Universal Monsters movies that they were proposing. I think it was called the Dark Universe, and yeah, they got as far as uh, the the Mummy, the version that has Tom Cruise in it, and like one other movie, and I think it was a Dracula movie. And that was it. And they're like, fuck, both those movies lost a ton of money. Never mind. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm getting at with this roundabout fucking well, tangent, that, but... I That can sort of tangent into... Uh, it'll come up more in, when we talk about stuff like Iron Man and some of the Avengers movies, but speaking yeah. of interference by a party involved in the movie, such as Tom Cruise interfering with the mummy movie and making himself (laughs) more important in the film. From my understanding, I never watched it because everybody said it was garbage. Uh, I mean, that was part of it for sure. I can't say, but he did rewrite the script and force more of his presence into the movie. (laughs) That, That is accepted by everyone. So I don't, yeah. that's not conjecture by me. <laughs> I don't know the quality of the movie, but it sounds like that would not increase the quality of the movie. I've never heard a single person say a good thing about it. So I'm going to trust that. So another thing that will come up and I didn't really find a whole lot about it in here, but there is that long standing working relationship with Hollywood and the Pentagon where if you get to use any of their cool toys, they can uh, overrule or steer aspects of films to present them in a bit of a better light or to avoid criticisms. Yeah, I, that's definitely... <laughs> that's, I am... Um fairly certain that that is definitely a thing it would explain a lot of movies especially that came out in the 90s and I, there's a I, there, I think there is a whole book written about top gun and yeah it's the air force recruitment tool like captain marvel um we were not to that movie yet or at all or whatever but there are clips from Captain Marvel used in Air Force recruitment ads. Uh, there's a lot of Captain Marvel that's... Isn't it awesome to be a pilot in the Air Force? Yeah. And... Yeah, I mean, every government agency that works with Hollywood in uh, ways has some form of control. I mean, there was pressure from the FBI and other agencies earlier or like during the Red Scare. It's a bit more transactional nowadays. So there are some people, I think John Favreau got into it with whoever was in charge uh, on one of his projects where they wanted him to change something. And I think he just said, fuck it, I won't do it. Or fine, let's, I'm going to change the script so we don't have to give you what you want or something like that. Uh. But... It is a lot more present in the Iron Man movies where everyone loves a military weapons contractor. 
And yeah. I mean, it's nothing. We're not doing anything. We're just being an occupying force. And here in Captain America, the first Avenger, they take it up where everybody who wants to fight in the war is good and they don't really deal with the isolationism of America. They set up, you know, like early on in the movie theater, the one douchebag that's yelling over the newsreel about soldiers and stuff. He's clearly the bully villain. And that is also another good thing about when you fight Nazis, it's very clear who the villain is. Which they sort of lose later on when they do different wars and different fights. Right. And, and you know, here it's like a a worse Nazi. <laughs> like, you know, uh, the way the way Red Skull and his he's got the mad scientist type guy who's still a little bit more sane. But I guess Stanley Tucci is is the only person that would have really deserved being in Operation Paperclip. He seemed to he, he sort of Albert Einstein. He got out before it got to shit. Yeah. And the other guy who worked for Red Skull and helped develop the weapons based off the Tesseract is like the people that came over in Operation Paperclip, which I keep talking about. Have, are you familiar enough with it? I mean, I think a little bit. Like, it's like, you know, German scientists basically coming to America and working on top secret shit. Yeah, get it, getting getting passes on the terrible things they did in Germany to come work in our space program or the nuclear program and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, so, I, you know, the movie itself is pretty. I mean, it's setting up the whole universe or whatever. But uh, the captain is weak. He can become strong. He goes. He is being used as a propaganda machine. Like they were showing the videos of him in the newsreels before they show how fake it is you can see that there are palm trees in the background of their supposed war footage right and stuff and then it sort of looks in on itself as that he feel what he feels like a dancing monkey or whatever uh, uh but captain america the character itself was sort of a tool to try to get people aware of and doing something about the Nazis. So it's, I don't know. It's, it's very circular in that uh, looking uh, it's meta, meta. meta. There we <laughs> so, go. I was trying to avoid it. Not really, but I was trying to come up with a, yeah, it's meta. It's at the very <laughs> least is self-aware. Like, yeah, the, yeah. the character is making fun of the character. There we go. And, you know, we've got Howard Stark introduced, the hover technology introduced, super serum. We've got, oh, I mean, the Tesseract is here. That's going to be key in this whole universe. Uh. You set up how badass Agent Carter is. And like I said, Tommy Lee Jones playing Tommy Lee Jones in the army. Oh, he's so great in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. He's he's doing the yeah, he's doing something that Tommy Lee Jones does very well, which is play a fucking drill sergeant military guy. He's he's perfect in this movie. A cantankerous old dick that likes people sort of sometimes. Agent Carter. Colonel Phillips. I can see that you are breaking into candidates. That's good. Get your ass up out of that dirt and stand in that line of attention until somebody comes and tells you what to do. <laughs> he'll, he'll give credit where credit's due, but yeah, earning his uh, approval seems like a very difficult thing. <laughs> well, look at that. Isn't it the star-spangled man with the plan? Don't He's you like our, our, our Arlie Ermy in Full Metal Jacket if he toned it down and like grandpa it a little bit. Arlie Ermy after some therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But th this sets it up. This is... A good movie on its own. There's Captain America goes to war, saves his friend, falls in love, 
loses his friend, stops the bad guy, has the hero's death. I think that scene is with the the bomb drone thing. I think that is from one of the comics. I can't I mean, remember. That, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know if that's like his comic book origin, how he got it. Because I know that does happen in the comics where he gets frozen for a while kind of deal. But I don't remember if that was how it happened in the, in the comics. But yeah, he gets, he gets frozen and thawed out later for the Avengers and everything. And while he was frozen. Because I think, if I remember correctly, they sort of just started up then but then there's other yeah, it's comic book world i'm not even going to try to parse through it i think we well what else what else uh haven't we said i mean we get we got the setup for bucky becoming something which i love I, I love the fandom that's grown out of that like a, a lot of the uh the the, the male to male relationships in uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe have been like just absolutely pulled apart by like Tumblr kids that want everybody to be gay, which is fine, you know. <laughs> That's just like it definitely seems like to be a thing with more than a few Marvel characters, and not necessarily the ones that like were ever mentioned in the comics or the movies as being gay. It's just like how you read their body chemistry on on screen and uh you know i gotta admit i think it had me thinking for a minute there that maybe steve rogers and bucky are more than just friends at some point in this movie but uh (laughs) it's possible but that i guess that would make steve possibly bi because he of course did have a love and sexual relationship with agent carter right um so I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to say. Uh, I know. Well, it's not hard to say. Someone knows, but I don't know. And I think Mark Mark Hamill put it best when somebody asked him, like, if, like, why why Luke couldn't be gay, and like, you know, Luke as a character had inspired them at some point, and you know. And I, his response was something along the lines of, "Well, like that's up to you. That's how you interpret the character, and that's like kind of a great thing. Is like it means something different to everybody, and if that's what you take away from it, great, cool. Like you know, uh, right? And I think I it's know. easy if if men show affection to each other for people to say that it's gay. Yeah, this is also true. So." Uh, they they probably know. I, they seem to work on their characters very well. I know what in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I think Falcon's sister has the hots for Bucky. Yeah. But I have But uh, that, that's another one. All, all the Tumblr kids were like, oh my god, they're new boyfriends, fucking Falcon and Winter Soldier. And at some point, uh, Anthony Mackie got interviewed by somebody that asked him about it, kind of, and he very, like, I think the question made him very awkward, and he didn't really know how to answer it. And I I felt a little bad for the guy, but also at the same time, he should have had, like, there's no way they haven't, like, somebody hasn't asked him this question at some point. I guess, I don't know, maybe... It's just because that show is like, like those dudes become such dude bros with each other. And like you said, anytime like people see dudes that like have even, you know, <laughs> not being just complete assholes to each other, that like it could be interpreted by some people as, you know, older oh, gay or whatever. But um, he hugged him and yeah. didn't punch him automatically on the shoulder. What the fuck? You know? Yeah, exactly. I, 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 I guess. Yeah, with that, well, I, I hope Anthony Mackie is prepared a little bit better the next time he gets asked a fucking question like that. Because I, I, I don't have it right in front of me, but if I recall right, it was a very awkward, fucking kind of not nice sounding answer to that, and a lot of people gave him shit for that. But I, I don't know. Also, at the same time, like I, don't, that it might be kind of mind blowing shit for people that like have never been in that position before have like people speculating about your character's sexuality and then you have to have some sort of a fucking answer about it in front of an interview or whatever like you know i don't know I, that's kind of a cheap place to put somebody in and i like you know like i said i hope he's better prepared for that answer the next time he gets asked and he has more of a mark camel question where you know it doesn't it doesn't come off as like you're opposed to the idea basically 
It, it, I haven't seen it, but I would bet that a lot of... I mean, Mark Hamill is Mark Hamill. He could, he could, he could tell Disney to go fuck themselves. Yeah. And he, he easily could do that. But I bet a lot of people that play characters that are owned by Disney are afraid of saying something that they aren't they might get them in trouble to say uh, or ha ha you fucked up <laughs> you know. lawsuit yeah get in the box ha ha <laughs> <laughs> there's you know, I don't know <laughs> the evil evil mouse comes crashing yep. down on a young actor or I mean who knows I mean it's not like Disney hasn't hired homophobic people before very but true. I would say the the awkwardness you're talking about sounds like he didn't know what he could say, rather than trying not to say something Gina Carano ish. Uh, yeah, that yeah, you're, you hit the nail nail on the head there. <laughs> Gina Caronic. I'm not sure. Ish. Yeah, I guess ish. I saw rumors that she might be she might be coming back to Mandalorian, which kind of fucking surprised me. I figured she had kind of nuked that bridge. Well, she it sounds like things didn't work out with Ben Shapiro's production company, or maybe Kevin Sorbo's blacklisting her from the <laughs> God's Not Dead franchise, or whatever the fuck they're doing over there. I guess there's like a Christian Netflix type thing that's just all Christian movies. And well, that doesn't surprise me. There's a movie where Kevin Sorbo, hard right wing dick bag in real life, plays a philo- like a cocky philosophy professor that if you sign a piece of paper that says God is dead, you'll get an A or something in the class. And the, fuck? the stand steadfast believers say no. And I'm sure they get him to change his mind or something like that throughout the movie. It looks like the whole movie takes place in the classroom, pretty much. Except for the scene I saw where the young Muslim girl is being driven by her oppressive father. And then as soon as she gets out of the car, she takes off her burqa, I want to say. I hope I don't... I think that's the name of the item of clothing. I believe you are correct. And... It, it looked really ridiculous, and I was thinking Yeesh. about doing a commentary on it, maybe. <laughs> if I was on it, it would just be me groaning a lot, like, oh, no. Uh, uh, but, yeah, fuck Kevin Sorbo. Kevin Sorbo is not a friend of the show. Fuck, no. And we are... Thank God he's not in any of the Marvel movies. Right? I Well, <laughs> but do you know who was... Uh, a producer on lots of the Marvel movies, Steve Mnuchin. I'm not familiar with him. He was in Trump's cabinet. Ugh. Don't like that. Yeah, he he was uh, Secretary of Treasury. Jesus Christ. I don't like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but he was an executive producer, so he mostly didn't have the money finder artistic control and that's he did that before before he joined uh the cabinet he's still a Ah. shitty person he was like a hedge fund guy before he got into politics technically got into politics right but uh, he was a producer on the x-men movies uh, he, he founded Dune Entertainment uh, that put out, yeah, X-Men movies, Avatar, um, of course, a little bit more his style, American Sniper, uh, Oof. Mad Max Fury All movies. Road. Oh, man, see? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you had me against him, and now I'm back on board. Exe- uh, executive producer on the Lego movie. Jersey Boys, Annabelle, American Sniper, Fury Road. Oh, shit. Makes it made a ton of fucking money. Yeah. Uh, Jupiter Ascending, Black Mass, 
Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, Conjuring 2, Lights Out, Suicide Squad, fucking Lego Batman, uh, Wonder Woman, Annabelle Creation, Disaster Artist. Oh, boy. Executive producer on a lot of fucking shit. And I don't know if it's just because he was the founder of Dune Entertainment and sort of like you get that credit. Like uh, with Trump, one of his things was if you shot at his properties, he got to have a cameo and he'd try to talk the director into letting him have a speaking part. Ah, kind of like Home Alone 2. Yes, that's why he's in Home Alone 2. That's why he's in some other shit. There were some directors that found ways to sort of get around it, but he got that option if you shot at one of his properties because he's fucking... An egomaniac. But I think that's probably enough talking about him right now. Uh, Speaking about old fucking Nazis that lost, Red Skull is defeated... (laughs) In this movie, but Captain that was a America. great fucking segue. <laughs> I'm working on it, and we've got the the end credit scene where Cap wakes up and Samuel Jackson shows up. It's like a pre post credit scene, basically. Like in the later movies in the Marvel universe, they they would have done that scene like after the credits, maybe. Well, I don't know. This one you can't really end with him like crashing the fucking plane into the into the iceberg or whatever. Like that that'd be a real bummer. Like kind of <laughs> note to end on. So uh, I guess I see why they did it with this one and stuck it at the very end of the movie where yeah he wakes up in modern times. Samuel Jackson's standing right there saying, it's time to go. I got some work for you. You've been asleep for a long time. And then he delivers one of the saddest and last lines in a superhero oh, movie. That's right. Never mind. This movie does end on a fucking super bummer note. Well, but they they sort of try to change it because he says, you know, you've been asleep for almost 70 years. And he's like, oh, I had a date. And then the super happy Captain America music comes on, you know, do, 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 you know, yep. right, right after the show, to... show tune version. So it doesn't hit you until later that he realized that she's dead. Yeah. And that was Captain America first Avenger. And uh, we'll find out from the comments if we talked enough about the movie, but I think we talked almost on topic that entire time so far. Yeah. uh, Let me grab a beer real quick and I'll be right back and we can, uh, we we can wrap, wrap this up and then, uh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Are you just coming back with a beer or are you seeing if you got an expert? Uh, I'm going to grab a beer and we'll wrap up you and me's part and then we'll see, see if the expert wants to come talk for a minute. All right. Moments later. You got your beer. Yep. Got your CBD. Uh, is that just yeah. regular vape I heard? Uh, well, that's my that's my nicotine vape. Probably uh, is is medical only. You guys know of wreck in your state? Yeah, we're yeah we're medical only, and uh, anything under like three and a half ounces is a misdemeanor fine. Well, okay. But it's you can't. Can't, can't go to sell. jail for it. Now, somebody did introduce another regulated like beer bill, and we'll, we'll see what's going on with that. They're in the middle of the redistricting nightmare. Uh, you know, we passed two constitutional amendments to fight gerrymandering. Right. Say stuff like the political party can't draw a map that blatantly favors a political party and other things like that. And the Republican majority of the districting commission came back with maps that give them like the same amount or maybe more seats than they already gerrymandered themselves into 10 years ago. Right. But if it doesn't get struck down by the courts, which it could, because as fucking slimy Republicans can be, the governor and our secretary of state said at the meeting, 
we don't like how this process has gone and we think it's going to get challenged in the courts, but we're voting for these maps. And so, yeah. Uh, anyway, those only last for four years if they stand because it was passed without the other party's support. Ah. Uh, oh. So who the fuck knows? That's just the state legislature. Uh, like, Republicans have won an average of 54% of the vote, but they have 75-something percent of the seats. Right. They, they said some weird Republican logic that they deserve anywhere between 54 and 81 percent of the seats because of the amount of votes they got so it's all fucked up it's probably going to go to the state supreme court i'm in a fucking weird mood because i was all like it's not going to be you know even the map that the democrats uh, put forward still had the republicans having a majority but it wasn't a veto proof super majority that causes all these terrible problems like, right you know, making it so the health department can't issue health orders during a pandemic and shit like that. But anyway. Yeah. Just gotta remind myself that it's it's not technically gonna be worse. It's just not gonna get better. <laughs> Which is life in America. Yeah. Uh, but you got a beer. I think we're back now. Now that you've got your beer, nothing goes better with Captain America than beer and complaining about America. <laughs> it's because he can't get drunk because of his metabolism. Oh, yeah. Speaking of sad things in this movie, I don't know. That's also kind of ideal American kind of deals in America that doesn't fucking drink. Right. It's a, like leftover prohibition kind of way of thinking about it, I guess. Maybe he's just gotta do better drugs. But so yeah, kind of to kind of to wrap up about this movie. Uh, I I dig this movie a lot. I think this is a pretty solid, like kind of early Marvel movie. I mean, they're they're all at least pretty good <laughs> up until uh, pretty late in the fucking game. There's one or two of these movies that I don't really care for, but, uh, this is not one of them. This I think is like one of the better, like origin story type deals. This is a fun movie. Like I made the Indiana Jones comparison at some point, like it, it will never not be fun to me to just see Nazis get their fucking asses kicked. And, uh, I, I think Chris Evans is a really great fucking captain America. He's, he's, he's dreamy. He's got the charisma, but he's also got the heart kind of, you know, like he's he's the character you feel bad for. And uh, I remember the first time watching this, the special effects of making him look like a skinny little guy, like really threw me for a loop. And I was like, what the fuck? Uh, just because I, I was already, you know, kind of familiar with him as an actor. So seeing him as a CGI skinny shrunk down dude is, is kind of jarring at first. But uh, after having watched this a couple more times, I think they did that about as good as they could. I don't know how else they could have done that. And it would look any better. I mean, it's basically like a big composite shot of like your background and Chris Evans doing the actions of the actor in the scene and then like his body double that's like some super skinny 90 pound dude that they cropped his face onto. And uh, I, I don't know, for 10 years ago, this looks, this has, this movie has an insane amount of special effects. I was listening to the audio commentary a little bit and the amount of times they said, oh, that background or that or that isn't real, that's CGI. Like, you, know, you could play a drinking game that would probably kill you to that shit. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I dig this movie a lot. I, th I think the effects are pretty good. Uh, I, I, I enjoy watching Chris Evans as Captain America. I, you know, like, these are these are just fun. This is a fun movie. As the Captain America movies go, they get a little bit more serious. And like I said, they get a little bit more, uh, you know, critical of America as a country, I think, which... Uh, they handle pretty good where it's, you know, not like nobody's, you know, nobody's accusing the 
later Captain America movies of being like anarchists or anything like that. But, uh, you know, there's some shit where they recognize that America's fucked up and especially in regards to war a few times. And, uh, this one, not so much, I think just because of the time period it takes place in, but yeah, the later ones like become like, I feel like very cynical, uh, like kind of James Bond kind of movies. Um, so yeah, th- this this first one isn't my favorite Captain America movie, but I think this is one of my favorite of the origin kind of movies. It's uh, it, it's a lot of fun, and uh, yeah. What about you? It also is a sentiment I could echo. It is not my favorite Captain America movie. It's been a while since I've watched them. So I don't want to guess which one is my favorite, but I've got a pretty good idea which one is my favorite. And of the origins, yeah, I, I, this might be blasphemy, but I'd watch this over Iron Man any day. Yeah, which isn't to say like Robert Downey Jr. isn't like really fun to watch either. I mean, they're they're two very different characters, and like a lot of, uh, well, yeah, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff about uh, Tony Stark in the Iron Man movies is like he's he's I think a much more deeply flawed character. I don't really Captain America really doesn't have any flaws I don't think other than that he's a dude living out of time uh whereas Tony Stark is a narcissist and a bit of a drunk and uh money has gone to his head big time and like he thinks he can just get away with anything and it fucks up his relationships and makes a lot of people angry but steve rogers i mean can you think of anything bad about him <laughs> he's he's pretty uh I, I i guess in the not in this movie but in some of the later movies he's like maybe a little too uh because he he's the one that goes along with like the the accords later that say like you're you're basically under government control and you do what we say and you know you're, you're qu- destroying cities and shit uh, Cap is kind of one of the ones that goes along with it, isn't he? Am I wrong? I can't remember <clears throat> that. I know he. There is commentary about the surveillance state for sure. That he is against nah. that, which is cool. I can't remember. It's been it's been a while. I've kind of been staying away from him since we started the planning. I've just been watching the ones that get picked out, not by me. Uh, so I can have a bit more of a fresh perspective on some of these. Maybe our our guest appearance here coming up in a little bit can clarify some of that shit. She she, she knows all about it, but also we'll get more into that when we get to, like, Civil War. But uh, anyway, anyway, uh, that that doesn't have way a lot to do with the first Avenger, which, like, uh, yeah, that's the other thing this one sets up is Howard Stark. Like, this is probably the most screen time he gets in any of the MCU movies. And he was really the one that kind of, you know, kickstarted off a lot of this wacky technology that makes a couple of these superheroes, you know, who they are. I guess the super serum wasn't really his deal, but he, he also powered all the electricity to that fucking Frankenstein looking ass submarine thing that Steve Rogers gets stuck into as a little guy and comes out a big buff dude. Uh, but yeah, this, this is a pretty solid one. Like I said, at the beginning of the show, we kind of picked this one just because it comes first in Marvel chronology. But, uh, I think after this, yeah, we, we, I think we might do like a alternating thing where like we come back to the rest of the Marvel movies, you know, a, uh, two episodes later we'll we'll do something non-marvel for the next episode because it'll also be october so i'm thinking something a little bit uh more more spooky but but, uh anyway yeah it was uh i think this was a good one to start on i i I like this movie a lot i i don't feel like i have way a lot else to say about it but uh i was thinking we could do something that i have never done on a podcast before which is uh, I'm going to invite my fiance on to talk to you for a couple of minutes about Captain America, and she can tell you, you know, I don't know what what the character means to her and how, why she's insanely obsessed with uh, Captain America, and maybe more specifically Chris Evans. But um, uh, yeah, I don't know. You got anything else you want to you want to add before we call her in? No, I th- I agree with you. The I think this was a 
obvious place to start, and I hope, dear listener, that we did not enrage you too much. I know we're kind of playing... Anybody that's really into something, it's easy to get annoyed when someone goes on a podcast and talks about it like they know what they're talking about. So I I do want to say that I did look into this a little bit, but yeah, I, I did not do 80 years worth of research. That's, that's hard to do. That's uh, There's a lot of goddamn comic books. I only have so many hours in the day that I can be reading comic books. So, yeah, it, it's it's what we're going to be doing over here on the Psychosemantic Legion Patreon section. And like I said, probably going to end up in the regular feed somewhere, but I don't know when, and I'm not going to guess. That way I can do it whenever I feel like it, if at all. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, you're going to stay, you're going to add an extra pair of headphones, or are you dropping out for a while? Uh, I do not have a pair, of, an extra pair of headphones that I can plug into this thing, so I'll I'll just turn it over to her and have her sit, and when you guys, I don't know, I guess feel like you're done, you can uh, all her, holler at me, and we'll wrap it up for the night. Okay, cool. All right, give me, give me two seconds, I'll go round her up. More moments later. All right, Darren, I've got Megan on the horn. Cool. Hi, Megan. Hi. All right. You're going to bring me to school on uh, Captain America or? (laughs) Uh, I'll do my best. Awesome. Uh, (laughs) I figured it would probably just be good to have somebody that knows a bit more about what they're talking about chime in on this. (laughs) Yeah. um, I... Mostly just the MCU version. <laughs> I'm kind of bad at actual comic books, but I have been a big fan of all the movies for a long time. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, welcome uh, to to this recording. I hope Mark didn't Thanks. totally spring it on you. I hope you talked about it a little bit before it happened. A little bit, yes. Okay. Because it just seemed like an idea that popped into his head. and. <laughs> Uh, I mean, sort of, but I knew you were doing it, <laughs> so it's fine. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time to to do this. Um, I'm trying to think. I guess just you said you're a big fan and you've been a big fan for a long time. Did you see yeah. Captain America, First Avenger in the theater? Yes. yes. Um, right. Not too long after it came out. That was actually the first... Uh, like, that was kind of the beginning of the end. <laughs> but yes, I did go see it in theaters. So, like I told Mark, I'm more familiar with not traditional comic books and stuff. So, I did most of my research was just reading a couple chapters out of a book about Marvel. And I have seen these a lot. Uh, my son is a big fan of the MCU. But he almost always just wants to watch Endgame. <laughs> Or oh, anymore. why? It hurts so much. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's just that that six year old mind of the battles. Oh, um, yeah. Well, having everybody all in one is way easier than watching 12 separate movies. So that's valid. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's I think he learned. Well, didn't necessarily learn his lesson because he still likes all, all the Godzilla movies. But, you know, <laughs> it takes a while to get sure. through that. Sure. Uh, so Chris Evans is a yes. very handsome man. Yes. I hear you agree with me. And <laughs> um, did you, were you aware of the making of the movie? And like when you found out that Chris Evans was going to be Captain America, was that a thing? Or was it just, I'm going to see this movie. I like this movie. Chris Evans is awesome. Um, uh, Honestly, I kind of went into it blind Um, I didn't really know anything about, uh, like, Marvel or, um, like, superhero movies, just kind of in general. Um, I I had seen Fantastic Four prior to that, so I was vaguely aware of who he was. Um, But it was just a a hobby I picked up with my best friend. (laughs) And, um, like, other people, you know, other groups of friends, we'd 
let's go grab these people. Let's go see this movie. And everybody had been talking about this one. So we thought, okay, let's go see it. Um, And we went actually to one of the old cheap seats theaters. um, And I walked out and was just totally blown away at how much storytelling there was. I didn't know anything about comic book movies at the time. Um, And of course, it's kind of vague as far as a lot of the deeper comic book storylines go. Um, You know, the the MCU can only do so much. But, But yeah, that was like my intro into the Marvel Cinematic Universe entirely. And I ended up... Um, the only ones that I ended up consistently seeing were the Captain America movies. I did not go see any of the Iron Man movies in theaters. I saw, um, all the Thor movies in theaters and of course, like all the other ones that came after it. But that was really like the one that started the whole thing. (laughs) (laughs) Is this your favorite Captain America movie? Uh, the, actually the Winter Soldier is my favorite one. Um, if I had to pick a top MCU movie, it would be Winter Soldier closely followed by, um, Guardians of the Galaxy and then Black Panther. Um, but Captain America is my favorite, uh, MCU character. Nice. Are you on Twitter? Do you follow Chris Evans on Twitter? Yeah. He's awesome, isn't he? Yeah, he's so great. And I met him a couple of years ago um, at Salt Lake Comic Con back in 20, no, 2015. And it was right when they were finishing. They had been working on reshoots, actually, for Civil War. Um, he was there. Sebastian Stan was there. And Anthony Mackey was there. And he, I know he's like fairly, I know he's been on Twitter for a while. And he's fairly new to Instagram. But he, he's just as genuine in real life as he comes across on social media, which I think is kind of hard to find lately, but he's just a genuinely nice person. (laughs) So it helps that he's not just like a typical kind of stuck up kind of celebrity person. So he's not Captain America for the paycheck only. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I, like, I, I know he talked a lot um, at the panel at Salt Lake Comic Con about how he struggles a lot with um, like social anxiety and just anxiety in general. And he knew that signing up for that role was going to come with a massive um, like social media presence and, you know, uh, movie premieres and talk shows and all these things that were just going to push him into a spotlight that he wasn't super comfortable with. But I think he's handled it really well. Um, And he, when we met him, that was the first con where he had been where he'd actually got to meet people and talk with people instead of just doing a panel at San Diego and then leaving and he was fantastic he took the time to like as much time as he possibly could because you're rushed through all of that so fast but he actually stopped and said hi to everybody he was very gracious telling everybody don't be afraid to come talk to me come ask for a hug come say hi he's just such a genuinely nice person that is cool to hear because yeah you get through levels like, okay, he seems really cool. He seems really cool on Twitter, but a dick in real life. Or, you know, there are some yeah. people that hate doing the cons. There For are sure. definitely right. people that are right. just like, oh my God, can I just <laughs> get the fuck out of here? I- right. Well, and I mean, of course they get paid, you know, like a, like an appearance fee, like a concert, but, and, and Chris Evans and Tom Hiddleston have donated the earnings that they got from attending conventions to charity. So that's cool too. That is cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, my wife is in love with Chris Evans and Tom Hiddleston. So. I mean, <laughs> she has good taste then. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> what would you say to somebody who has not seen an MCU movie, or more specifically, somebody that you're trying to get to watch Captain America Winter Soldier, and they're like, okay, it's a superhero movie. There's some sort of disaster and they fix it at the end. So th- that's the great thing about the Winter Soldier, though. And I th- I think that that's why it's my favorite is because you don't have to know everything that happened in the previous movie um, because it is such strong storytelling on its own. Um 
there's a lot of emotion in it. There's the superhero aspect, but it's also, you know, a, a political thriller. It came out in like 2016. So, you know, there's a lot of talk about this underground government, you know, society that's trying to take out half the world or, you know, spy on everybody to control what they're doing or see what they're doing. So as far as that goes and that political climate, I think it was relatable. <laughs> um, and so that kind of brought in interest in the rest of the movie. And of course, it ties into the previous, uh, the first Avenger, and then of course, Civil War picks up kind of where that one left off. Um, but it doesn't ha you don't have to know what happened in the first Avenger in order to watch the Winter Soldier because there's enough um, flashback storytelling that you can pick up on what is happening with the Winter Soldier. I'm like, I'm sure everybody has seen it at this point, so I hope that this isn't a spoiler for anybody, you know, but we, we lose... We spoiled newer movies. Okay. <laughs> we, we, we lose, you know... Bucky Barnes at the end of the first Avenger and then he comes back in the Winter Soldier but there was enough flashbacks in the Winter Soldier that you knew who he was and you knew why that emotional punch was there and that motivation like Steve's character has always been about doing the right thing like no matter what you know and for the good of everybody and not just the good of one person so even though he knew that going against you know, S.H.I.E.L.D. or HYDRA or whoever to try and figure out where Bucky went and try to get him away from that Winter Soldier persona. Yes, it was going to benefit him, but it was going to benefit everybody else in the long run by taking down S.H.I.E.L.D. who had been infiltrated by HYDRA. And so, but you get all of that comic book storyline and the Winter Soldier's presence from the comic books without having to read the comic books. So, that one would be a good one to start with probably to introduce somebody to the MCU because it's not like, it's not like, I don't know, the Iron Man ones where you have to watch the first one in order to figure out what happens in the second one or even, you know, the Thor movies. And historically, I think that if you look at, um, the second Iron Man movie isn't quite as strong as the first one. The second Thor movie isn't quite as strong as the first one. But as far as the Captain America movies go, its storytelling stands on its own. So it's not like it's kind of a lackluster second part of a trilogy. Good answer. I'm, I'm That's why I it's my thing. Ask you about that. <laughs> it's seriously, it's like if I if I had to pick my favorite MC movie, it's that one hands down character favorite character biases aside because it's such a good piece of storytelling i want your opinion do you think that it's a little weird that the hydra symbol isn't a hydra <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's more like a weird octopus <laughs> i hadn't really thought about it until i was critically thinking about the movie for for this one tail cuts off two more go right. back Right, but it's not, yeah. You, you just guys one missed head. the mark on that one, just a smidge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it probably looks cooler, but it, it, it does. Was, you know. Oh, well. But yeah. <laughs> That's but yeah. an easy thing to nitpick. So. <laughs> but Captain America, the character, seems to be what America thinks it is or what America should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably depending on the well no the because the, there's very much a, a captain america steve rogers and, and then there's very much the captain america john walker from oh, falcon and winter yeah. soldier <laughs> and he i think is very much the embodiment of what america thinks it is <laughs> but again he thinks he's doing the right thing Could but the war crime Right, because that's what he's always done, right? Because he has quite an extensive military background. Um, he has an extensive physical military background. You know, he's got a bunch of kills on his record. He's doing what he thinks is right. But he's also being weird and shady about it. But, I mean, Steve kind of did the same thing. Just, yeah. <laughs> I never actually thought about that until... 
just now. Well, I got it on. Rec- I got it recorded. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but they there's like the way they presented themselves too was also. I mean, like yeah, they both did a lot of probably terrible things in the name of quote the greater good end quote. But the the end goal for Steve was always to make things better for everybody, whereas the end goal for John Walker was to make himself look good because he knew he had big shoes to fill. Nicely said. Mm-hmm. Is, is there anything else you'd like to add before I uh, let you get off the hot seat? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, thank you so much for chiming sure. in. Absolutely. Thank you for letting me chime in for 20 minutes. It was a good talk. It was nice talking to you finally. Yeah, I know. I hear such great things about all of you. And I actually finally got the chance to sort of meet one of you. (laughs) Well, I'm one of the nicer ones to talk to if I don't say so. So far, I think you're right. But um, yeah, thank you for all the time you let us take from Mark. Yeah, of course. (laughs) And maybe you'll come back on another one. Maybe. Uh, Yeah, you just. I said, if you guys want to talk about more Marvel stuff or if you want to talk about more Star Wars stuff, like if you guys do a Mandalorian episode, let me know. (laughs) Say a Star Wars show. Close enough. Yeah, just let me know. I love this stuff. So. Awesome. Well, thank you again for your time. Thank you. It's precious. Yes. (laughs) And I'll give Mark back to you in just a couple minutes. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. That sounded pretty good from what I heard from the other room. Yeah, I think it went well. Do you want to do like an outro kind of ding kind of thing? Sure. We'll have I Mark did. back in just a minute. <laughs> and now we're back with Mark. Mark's had three beers and didn't eat anything before we recorded, so he's a little liquored up. Ooh, Marvel Mark. Not really, but extended universe. It's blurring. You don't want me extended. I'm gonna pull a muscle at my age. No, that's that sounded really cool. What I heard of uh, making on the show earlier. So we'll we'll definitely have to have her back. Definitely for the Mar- Marvel stuff that I am fairly ignorant about. Uh, but yeah, this was this was fun. This was very outside of the box compared to what I usually do for podcasts. So it's all about expanding our horizons and joining the multiverse of podcasts. And in this one, we talk semi informed uh, in a semi informed way about comic book movies. But then you also get my perspective where you're just, I'm just a, d- a dummy about these things kind of, and have a real loose knowledge of them. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a good balance. And we know plenty of people that know about comic books, so we'll have them in from time to time, and we'll see how far this goes before it gets canceled. <laughs> before Bo brings the hammer down, canceled. <laughs> Either Bo or the comic fandom just says, "Hey, no, just don't, Darren, don't get back, get back to more politics." Nah, uh, because comic books aren't political at all, right? That's why I always knew I'd get around to talking about comic book shit. Because Absolutely. they're political and always have been. Even the ones that don't say anything are fine with the status quo. Yep. So Absolutely. One hundred percent. We'll we'll go we'll we'll go somewhere non MCU next time. The spooky season. There's all kinds of spooky comic book movies we could talk about. Somehow you got a bootleg of this. You still have time to sign up for the Legion Patreon and catch things as they come. I know. Do it. What does it cost you? Like a buck a month or something and you get access to all these shows? It's either one. I do. I do two dollars. I do two dollars a month. Two bucks a month. If enough of y'all, y'all do it, it helps out some people tremendously. Yeah, there's some cool stuff. You know, we've got. Uh, you know Scott and Heather. I haven't even gone through all of the Legion Patreon stuff, but Scott and Heather from Friday Nightmares. They do all kinds of lists and stuff. 
and then Court, that Cinema Psyops, has a total different soundtrack to his episodes. Oh, Patreon. yeah. That's, that's, that's worth a couple bucks right there. Uh, Bo has much better podcasters than I, adding stuff to the Patreon. As far as I can tell, every show is going to do at least one thing a year. Lots are doing more. And right on. This was mine, or this was ours. This was ours. But that that is Mark. He's Darren. We'll come up with our superhero names at some point. And this is this is our origin story part one. Or we might have more origin story before any of any you know <laughs> the timeline of this podcast really starts to form, you know, somewhere in the midway point. This is this is step one. We got this done, which, like I said earlier in the episode, I was a little nervous about this because I felt like I didn't know jack shit about Captain America. So I'm glad that you kind of swooped in and gave us some background. But I do really love this movie and uh, some of the later Captain America movies. So we'll, we'll come back to this. We'll we'll definitely have Megan back on to talk about some <laughs> nerd super nerd shit. Whereas I'm more of a casual nerd as far as comic book stuff goes. Uh, but yeah, this uh, this was pretty rad to do. I I'm, I'm glad you asked me to come and help you out with this because uh, it was this was what I was like. Fuck yeah, let's talk about comic book movies. Fuck yeah, and we did. Tune in next time. I almost said week. Same bat time, same bat channel. For the continuation same. of... <laughs>